Hello and welcome to this quick video for this gentleman here, Mystic Guido One. He was asking about how you use the alignment tab in iNow 7.0 and later to align both your flight controller and your external compass or GPS. Now this is actually a great question. I will be doing a full series on iNav 7.1 when that eventually comes out, but this is a great enough question that it deserves a video in its own right. Now, all of the light controllers that you're going to get will have an arrow on them somewhere. By default, that arrow should point towards the front or nose of the vehicle, whether that's a plane, a quad, a wing, or whatever it is you're building. And that's the way that I set up flight controllers and the external GPS compass unit in my iNav for Beginners series. And there's a very good reason why I do it that way. That's so, so that when you do the iNav configuration, all the default orientation is fine. However, similarly in my T2 build that I did recently, I couldn't mount the flight controller in the way that I wanted to. It physically wouldn't fit. So I had to rotate the flight controller by 90 degrees, but occasionally you have to mount the flight controller in weird places, at angles upside down. So you have to take that into account. Or crucially, the external compass that's part of the GPS and compass unit then needs to be orientated properly as well. Now, if you are not enabling the compass, then you don't have to do the second step. So long as the GPS is mounted vertically so that the top part of it, the antenna, is pointing towards the sky, then you are good. If that directional arrow is pointing any direction towards the tail, plane, left, right-hand side of the model, it doesn't actually matter. However, if you are going to use a compass, and I'd recommend you use a compass if you are setting up a multi-rotor with iNav, or if you are setting up a flying wing or plane with iNav and you're going to be flying in higher winds, then those are the situations when you need a compass and having the correct compass orientation is going to work too. So in the next bit of video, let me jump onto the desk and go through how you use this fantastic new tab in iNav 7. There's a couple of parts to it. First of all, you do the flight controller orientation first, and all you're doing is you're matching the arrow orientation that's physically printed on the flight controller to how you want to mount it in the plane or wing or quad that you're building. And then once you've done that and you're happy and it's working properly, and you can check that by using the setup tab in iNav configurator, then you can move down and you can then do the orientation of the compass in all three axes. It's really important that you do that. So enough waffling on, let's go on the bench and answer this question for Mystic Guido One. So most flight controllers and GPSs like these are going to have an arrow that should always, as I said in the introduction, be pointed towards the front of the model. If you do, then setup becomes really easy because the defaults in things like iNav are going to work fine. However, because of Mystic Guido One's question, Let's have a look at how this all works because it's a lot better in iNav 7. So let's click on connect on the computer and then go down into the alignment tool. And don't worry about the fact that the GPS is red at the moment. I'm using a flight controller that doesn't power the GPS unless we have main power attached, but we don't need that for this demonstration. Now, the big trick with this to know whether or not you've got the alignment of the flight controller correct is to just go into the setup tab. And if the model appears to be flat and level, which it almost is on the screen, then you know that the alignment is right. So for example, this is the front of the model. So as I lift it here, you can see that that lifts the nose up and that's exactly as you'd expect it to be. And it's working as the defaults. However, things get a little bit more complicated because you also have to think about how the GPS and compass is set up. However, you only really need to worry about this if you are using the compass that's part of the GPS compass unit. If you're not, if you haven't got the compass installed at all, so you just got the four wires connected, then you don't have to worry about the alignment of this. So long as the receiver is pointing up towards the sky, you are great. But let's go through this overall and just talk about the different options then. If you want to mount your flight controller and your compass in a different orientation, then have both of the arrows pointing towards the nose. So back here on the INF configurator, using INF configurator 7.0.1 as I'm recording this, if we go into the alignment tool, this is far cleverer than it ever used to be. 
The stuff at the top tells you how to do it. Adjust the flight controller orientation to match the physical orientation first, and then adjust the magnetometer to match the physical orientation second. Now, again, as I move things around, it won't move on the screen, but you can see here as I move the nose up, the pitch value is changing. So by default, this is going to be the front of the flight controller. However, it might be that you want to be one of the side pieces to be the front, i.e. that rather than the flight controller be mounted in this orientation, where this is the front, you might want it to be a slightly other way around. So if this is going to be the front of the model, we can see here that the little arrow is pointing over the side. We need to get the screen here to match it. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to yaw the flight controller around until the arrow matches. And you usually find that you're wanting 90, 180, 270 degrees is what you actually need for this. Now the arrow is matching how we're going to install it in the model, i.e. because you can move this um, around on the screen. Let me just bring it up a little bit by right clicking. You can see here that we now have the arrow pointing towards the wing. So this is now going to be the front. If I save and reboot this flight controller, when it comes back, it's going to apply the offsets. So this part of the flight controller will now be the front. And we can be able to see that if we go back into the setup tab, we see the plane is still level. However, now if I lift this part, that is now considered the front of the flight controller. Now it's important that in the alignment tool, we get the flight controller stuff right. And we can even do it so that the flight controller is upside down. So if the flight controller was in this orientation, but upside down, how would we do that? Well, <clears throat> we need to match the arrow. So in this particular instance, say we have it mounted uh, like that, we can then slide these to flip it over. So we could do pitch, 180 degrees. There we go. So now the flight controller itself, I just kind of move this around, is upside down and the arrow is pointing in this direction. However, if we wanted it mounting so the arrow is pointing the other way around, we're going to have to do the yaw to 270. And now we can see as I move it upside down, hopefully you can kind of see there, the arrow is now on the bottom pointing to the right wing or the right side of the model. So that's how you would do it. Let's save and reboot again. This time when it comes back though, because the flight controller isn't in that orientation, the model is going to be looking very wrong in the setup tab. And this is the way that I would recommend. There we go, the model is now <laughs> upside down. This is the way, the very easy way for you, once you've done the adjustment for the flight controller, to come in here and check that it's moving as you want it to. If it's not, then the orientation is probably going to be in the wrong way. So let's assume that we've kind of got that right and the flight controller is going to be installed upside down. Let's just do that again. Let's go back into setup. So now the flight controller is upside down, but it's still working exactly as we would want. So the flight controller, let's say that we're happy with that tick. What we'll do in the alignment tool, the next thing once we're happy with that is we now need to sort out the compass. And again, this is only needed if you are going to be using the compass in this external piece. If however you're not, then you know what? You can kind of ignore this next bit. But at the moment you can see that it's showing the GPS on the little image being upside down. So let's pretend that we're going to install this, but we're still going to install this the right way with the arrow pointing to the nose. What would we have to do in iNav to make that happen? Well, if we scroll down here, what I'm going to do is right click and drag. Now this whole thing up here about CW270 flip, that is what the defaults are for the compass. And that's because the compass chip that's actually mounted at the bottom of the GPS unit is typically inverted or flipped and usually mounted at a 270 degree offset, which is a bit confusing, but I wouldn't move that for now. What I would do then, if I wanted to mount my compass normally, even with a flight controller upside down, I'd move these sliders so that the picture now matches what I want. So let's flip it over. 
back to zero and let's your it one way or the other that way is what we want 270 is probably where we need again multiples of 90 degrees usually work that would allow us then to mount this gps with the little arrow pointing to the front and then what we do is we save and reboot again what's that really is doing is aligning the compass in relation to the flight controller if you're not using the compass and i don't use the compass often on fixed wing models you don't really have to bother too much about that however let's talk about the specific example from mystic guido one now what he's got he's got the gps with the arrow pointing to the back but we're not going to start with the gps we're going to start with the flight controller so let me just reset the flight controller a little bit just so it looks a little bit more normal so there we are the flight controller is now pointing if i can get all these numbers to zero uh, we can just type them in just for speed let's do that rather than use the mouse there we go so the flight controller and the compass uh, unit are now both pointing to the nose which is how I would recommend you do it however in his particular instance he's got the flight controller upside down with the arrow pointing towards the tail so let's do that let's uh, flip it over from a pitch point of view to 180 degrees and now if I flip that around there we go the flight controller is upside down but the arrow is pointing towards the tail so that's the way the flight controller needs to be and we'll hit save and reboot that's going to come back and now because the flight controller is physically upside down on the table or the right side up now because it's going to think it's upside down the model in the setup tab is going to appear upside down but that is the way it's going to fly you need to double check that that bit is absolutely right first but that looks pretty reasonable to me that is going to work for mystic guido one Next thing to do then is go into the alignment tool. Let's have a play now with the flight controller is upside down, but the arrow is still pointing to the rear, which we can see. Let's go and do the compass piece. Now we need to bring this around a little bit. So let me just, again, drag this image down so that we can get all of that in shot. There we go. So that is how it now looks. This time the GPS for him is mounted so the arrow is backwards which I'm not sure exactly why you've done that that wouldn't be my recommendation however we can fix it by moving the yaw in this direction so that probably 90 degrees we're at 90 we're after so let's get to 90 so there we go now that is going to be pointing in the right direction so when we use the compass it's going to apply that offset so the compass is mounted right way up which it needs to be because it needs to have a clear view of the sky but the arrow is pointing backwards whereas for the flight controller we can see that the flight controller is upside down and the arrow is pointing to the tail so we'll click save and reboot so the simple thing to do then to make sure that the flight controller is in the right orientation as we've already said is to go up the setup tab and to make sure with the flight controller held in your hands as it is mounted or the model to make sure that it flies in the way that you expect it to what about the compass well the thing with the compass is that you need to have the compass aligned perfectly and what that means is that if it's at an angle for example then it's not going to work the way that i do it is at the moment the compass isn't connected or configured but i put them both together or mount it in the model and then move the model around and what you want is you want everything to kind of look like it does on the screen now if you move it from side to side or up and down and the model itself is twisting as well that means that the magnetometer or the compass orientation is wrong so for example here as i move the nose up and down it's staying in the same heading which is here at the left hand side heading 357 degrees as i lift the nose upside down that's staying more or less on that if i do that and the model swings around dramatically here on the screen the compass orientation is almost certainly wrong and you need to go and double check it 
Last thing to talk about then is, well, hang on a minute. All we've really done is we've played with stuff when the compass is flat. What about when the compass is at an angle? Now, on the back of most uh, quads, it's going to be at an angle of anything from 20 to 40 degrees. You need to know what that angle is in order to set that up. And you can measure it with a good old protractor, the kind of thing that you used to use at school, or the information about the mount for the GPS might actually be on the listing for the quad or the frame that you've built out. So how do you do that? Well, again, very easily, we're going to alignment tool. And then what we're going to do is let's put the flight controller, because this is normally going to be in a quad. And I would always recommend trying to install stuff in a quad in the right way round. So there we go. That's that. Let's put the yaw back to where it needs to be. Let's put the compass the right way round just for the sake of argument here. So that's going to be, have to be minus 90. Or we can just pick the default. There we go. So now that is very much the default setting. Both the arrows are pointing to the nose. However, if this is on the tail of the model and it's set up like this, where the arrow is pointing to the head, then what we need to do is we need to do that offset. So if it is tilted up a little bit, like it will be in a normal, what we have to do is move each of these sliders to find the one that's going to move it in the right orientation for us. And that's probably going to be the role in this case. And we're going to increase it. Say the mount is a 20 degree mount. That is how we would set it. Or if for some reason we have to mount the compass GPS unit with the arrow pointing away, maybe the cable isn't long enough and we have to play with it. We can then flick it around so it's 180 degrees out of phase, like that. And all we're doing here is we're just matching the way it appears on the actual model itself. And we keep moving these sliders until eventually, get back to 20 degrees, that would then be it, the GPS is mounted on the back of the model, but the arrow is pointing to the rear. Personally, I would always recommend just to try and do it in the way that works. Again, we can easily just go back to the defaults if that makes it easier. And then you can apply a little bit of the offset. Again, the offset here, so this would be 20 degrees uh, or maybe 30 on a more aggressive mount for the GPS. This offset here has to match what the offset is on the rear of the quad, because these things are very rarely flat. And that's a good idea. So when it's flying, the GPS is actually pointing more towards the sky. It doesn't make that much of a difference in my humble opinion, but you have to match this number here, which will do minus 30 to match the degree offset of the quad frame that you're using. So hopefully that explains how to use this and Mystic Guido 1, hopefully that helps you too. It's an amazing, powerful tool now that really lets you figure out exactly how you're going to mount all this stuff. Personally for me, if you are new to this and you're not exactly sure how all this stuff works, I would mount everything with the arrows on the GPS and also on the flight controller pointing to the nose of the model and then you don't have to worry about any of this at all. Thank you for watching the video. If you watch my videos and find them useful, then please take a moment to hit the like and subscribe button. It helps the channel a lot. If you really like what I'm doing here, you can become a Patreon and support the time I spend helping others and get access to lots of exclusive benefits. Link is in the video description. Remember that all the videos on the channel are organized into playlists, so you can easily use those playlists to find all the videos on a subject that you are interested in. Add Painless360 to your searches on Google and YouTube, and it'll help you find my content for any particular topic. Thanks again for watching, and as always, happy flying.